Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. So, uh, today I want to show you a little bit about the fire. We've seen a uh, cloth with Bifrost, we've seen a little bit of the smoke. Did you see the smoke tutorial that I did during the weekend? I know it was a little bit like shaky and I had to go back and forth to make sure things were working, but I think the final result looks pretty, pretty nice. And uh, like overall, I think it took me about four hours, including the render to, to like make that thing. And uh, I've been studying a little bit, or not a little bit, a lot about Bifrost and I want to show you the things, but I don't want to show them just like a rehash of what other, other people have done. I, I want to try and see if I can give you practical examples of how to use it because I think that's one of the main issues that a lot of um, tutorials have that they show you how to do things but it's just like on a, on a vacuum right like something that yeah it works there but what if you had like a, a full scene or something like how would that work on that specific scene so hopefully this will work <laughs> so today we're gonna look at fire but to do that I actually want to do a little bit of modeling first and uh, I downloaded a fire um, I'm not sure if it's called brazier or brassier or something uh, but it's this thing right here there we go so we know scale is very important, right? Right now, uh, let me check my, my grid size. Yeah, it's to the basic scale. So I'm gonna make it small because the smaller the size of the objects inside of the simulation, the <laughs> the faster things will render. So for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it small. Probably not that small, just a little bit more. And there we go. And uh, one of the cool things about this object is it's actually pretty, pretty simple. Now I'm not gonna do the contraptions that it has there on the on the center. I'm gonna change that for like just like some like wood locks or something. And um, but we're gonna model everything else. And it's again super, super simple. So I'm gonna go into create, and we're gonna say two, 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 two polygon primitives pipe, and let's create the base first. So the base is roughly that. We're going to go to the options, we're going to change the radius, and it's about there. And if we check the thickness, it's definitely like a lot thinner. So something like that. There we go. So that's our base, right? And I know that the base is, um, uh, it has a, a, a floor that we're going to be able to, to model that. But that one's like pretty straight. I think that one looks good. Now I'm going to duplicate this thing, move it forward, scale it bigger, make it thinner, and then do that again scale it like that and then do that again and scale it like that there we go so that um that looks cool and yeah like the image has has perspective that's something very important but the the actual object shouldn't have perspective so this is what i'm expecting to see now we're gonna do the little like a uh, palette things that it has it has one two three four five six seven on this side one two three so it's 14 14 elements i'm gonna show you one trick very simple trick inside of maya um to do those things yeah, I'm going to use a cube. So I'm going to use a cube. I'm going to go to the right view. I'm going to make this cube really thin and really long. I'm going to move it here. And we're going to rotate it so it like hugs the surface of the of the whole thing. Now in the image, it, it seems that the that this thing is, is like might have a couple of cuts. I'm actually going to grab all of these guys. Well, not all of them. Let's start with this one first. And we, we do want to, well, I do want to bevel, or we'll do that later. I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of divisions on this, like, element so that we can just, like, push it in, you know? So push this guy in. Oh, wait. Why? Why did that happen? That's weird. There we go. Let's go to the right view. And again, what I want is for this to look like quite ah. oh my god maya come on there we go no why are you doing that okay so we're gonna have one line right there one line right there one line right there and one line down here i think i think there's a display issue with my maya right now it sometimes happens i might have to restart really weird just grab these vertices move them back because i just want this thing to be like on the inside of the of the rings right to to make it seem like it's 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 part of the inside of the rings let's move this thing right here yeah that looks about right and just grab this face and extrude it down cool so uh yeah on the reference we can see that they stop right there on the on the plate or the main plate so right about there i will say and up here, it's a bevel. So instead of doing a bevel, I'm actually gonna add a new line. Let me grab this face right here. 
and scale it so that we have this sort of like round effect. Because I know when we either smooth it or, or bevel it, we're gonna have a, a nicer effect. So grab this guy, I'm gonna go to the top view and I'm gonna move the pivot point with D to this place right here. Uh, actually, let's freeze transformations first. And now I'm gonna freeze transformation, the history center pivot, there we go. And with the letter D, oh, D, I'm gonna move the pivot point right there, perfect, on the center. So now I'm gonna use a very special tool called uh, Duplicate Special, which is an edit Duplicate Special. And I need the calculator because I suck at uh, math. And we're gonna say 360 divided by 14, that's 24.7. So I'm gonna say I want 13 copies because I already have the first one. And I'm gonna rotate them on Y, 24.7. Was it 24.7? I think it was. And we hit apply. Oh, grab this guy and hit apply. And boom, there we go. I think it was 25.7, right? See, I even have attention problems. So there we go. There we go. Perfect. So now we have the elements, but as you can see, they're really, really, really thick compared to what we have. So here's where we can use an, an instance, for instance, but I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to make this in thinner and hit apply. There we go. That looks a lot closer to our uh, reference. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now, um, the reason why I'm not adding bevels or smoothing this thing out is because I do want to have a mesh that's going to be our base mesh, or like our, our, our low poly that we're going to use for the simulation. Because if we use a really, really high density uh, polygons for the collisions and stuff, um, things might get a little bit heavier. So let's do the little legs. Those are quite easy. So I'm going to start with um, with the, like the bottom part right here. That's like the, like the base right there inside of the elements. And you can see we have four legs and they're connected by a cube as well, by like, a, like an iron element. So we'll just go there. Go to the front view, it's a lot thinner, so about there. They connect closer to the center, so about there. And then control D, we move this down and we rotate on 90 degrees. That's it. So that's my like the cross that we have right there. You can see that the distance is roughly, roughly the same. And now for this right view, again, there's a lot of ways to do it. I'm gonna show you one that I like, which is with curves. So I'm gonna go create curve tools, EP curve. And uh, from what I can see on the image, it goes uh, straight a little bit, like on the on the front side, and then it creates this like C-shaped curve. So I'm gonna go again to the right view. We're gonna start up here. So it's one, two, three, so that we get like a very straight line. And then we create our C-shaped curve all the way over here. There we go. And you can press Control, go to the Control Vertex uh, tab, and you can like modify the Control Vertex to get like a like a nicer, rounder effect. You can even delete a couple of this if you want. And, and that's like uh, like deleting edge loops. So it will make it a little bit softer. If these are like too much, let's push them closer. There we go. Now we could use the um, sweep mesh tool, which is one of the newest features inside of Maya 2022, which is here in uh, create sweep mesh. But I'm actually gonna use a, a cube, just a regular cube. I'm gonna show you another technique in case you don't have the um, the newest Maya. So just create a cube, make it so that it's the the like width that you want the the uh, like little element to be, and this is gonna be like the first section of the of the thing. So I'm gonna have it right there. We can move it later on. Don't worry. You're just gonna grab the face and then shift select the curve, and you're just gonna extrude through the curve, and then you're gonna add divisions to the curve, and the more divisions you add, the closer you're gonna get to the shape. Like that. Simple as that. Super super simple. It's a little bit too thick. Let's delete history, of course, so that we break the connection that we have with the with the curve. And now it's just a matter of bringing this guys, like scaling them down. Let's bring them down so they're right there. And you can see that it also has like this sort of round shape. So I'm just gonna grab this guy, make it thicker, thinner, and we can delete like this guy right there. And that's it. We have our nice little like leg for the for the brassiere. Same thing that we did with the with the top guys. I can just uh, press D and X to move the pivot point uh, to the center and then grab the guy, control D and rotate this 90 degrees and then rotate this 180 degrees and then rotate this 270 degrees and we should have our nice procedure. Now, this is the low poly version of our, of our thing right here, okay? So I'm gonna grab the whole thing and I'm gonna combine it. The well, history center pivot, first transformation and this I'm gonna call low poly brazier. I think it's brace here. I think that's the way you should pronounce it. I, I sometimes like to go to the to that Google options and just hear it out. 
yeah, brace here. So it's brace here. So if you know, you can go here, just click this guy right there and I'll tell you how to pronounce words because uh, languages are complicated. They're always complicated. So yeah, so this is my low poly brace here, brace here, brace here. And this is the one that we're gonna be using to generate the collisions of the smoke, the fire and everything so that we don't get, oh, sorry, disconnected my headphones. So that we don't get any uh, sort of like uh, bad collisions or anything. And um, we can, of course, continue modeling this, but I want to jump onto the fire section because I think that's the that's the fun part of the of the whole process. And um, and and I'll, I'll what can we do? No, I'll keep it simple right now. I, I don't want to go into textures and UVs and all the stuff. We've done that before, so I'll keep it simple. Later on, we might do it. The only other thing that my, I want to add are those like rivets that it has right there, but those rivets are not going to be part of the main shape because it's a lot of geometry that we really don't need to calculate for. Okay. So let's create a deep proxy for our locks. So I'm going to start with like a cylinder here and we're going to position this right here on the center of the, of the brace here. There we go. So it's going to be like one lock and then we're going to have a second lock like sitting over here. Try not to have it collide as much. And then let's have like a, like a third one kind of like resting over here, which is roughly what you see, right? When you're building a, a, a fire, like three locks are very common. We can add more locks, of course, but I think that's gonna be a, a little bit too much fire. You're gonna see how in just a second. So we're gonna use a pre-made fire and I'm gonna show you like the main things that you need to be aware of so that um, the fire works properly. You're gonna go, of course, you need to make sure that your Bifrost uh, plugin is turned on. So you're gonna go settings and preferences, plugin manager. And if you write here Bifrost, there's three plugins, the Bifrost graph, the Bifrost shell node and the Bifrost plugin. I recommend uh, having all of them turn on for this uh, part of the of the exercise. You're gonna go Windows and this is pretty much like the like the blender, like a uh, easy fire or simple fire or something like that. So we're gonna go into the Bifrost browser and if we go into fire, you're gonna see that we have this flame torch. So it looks like if you double click, you're gonna get like the actual flame torch. No, that's not what you get. You What you get if you uh, if you import the effect is you get a, this effect right here, this graph. And it's a very, very simple graph. I'm gonna go through it and, and explain what's happening. But first I wanna show you the simulation. So you can see that we have the sphere down here. Remember, whenever we're dealing with simulations, we wanna go into playback speed and change this to play every frame. Let me save before anything uh, else happens. So there we go. And if I hit play, you're gonna see that we get the combustion, we get the fire, and then we get the continuous fire. Like this thing is gonna be like uh, like emitting fire. Let me let me stop it. And smoke. Okay, so it's it's very very cool because it really looks like a like a torch or like a match or like something that you turn on. So I was thinking like, okay, how, how can I use this? And then it occurred to me, okay, what if we were doing like a cinematic shot of a character like walking towards like a dungeon entrance and see he's a brassier with a brazier, sorry, a brazier with with wood on it, and he's a mage and he just goes like fire, and in that moment <laughs> the fire just starts. So that's one thing that I think could work, and um, and uh, it looks quite nice. Hopefully the audio didn't get cut out there. Maybe it did. Stop. There we go. Sorry about that. But the simulation is really, really strong and uh, it's it's a little bit difficult to stop it once it starts. So yeah, as you can see, the effect is happening here. But there's a, a question that I had when I was looking at this effect. And it's like, where the hell is that sphere coming from? There's no sphere on my scene. Like, where is it coming from? Well, it, it um, turns out that you can actually create uh, meshes inside of uh, Bifrost as well. So not only can you simulate and, uh, and do crazy things with... Um, with uh, like uh, effects like fire and smoke and, and, and cloth, you can actually create stuff. So uh, right now what's happening is we create this sphere, we create this sphere, we assign, assign a gray shader to it and we make it be the source air. So remember when we use this one, it's like the smoke. So this is where the smoke is coming from because we're simulating this area, uh, area and that's where the, where the smoke is coming from. We have dissipation, we have very source property, we're varying the temperature. Um, we have the source fuel. So the source fuel is coming from, in this case, uh, the air. So the air that we have right here, that the air that we're generating, that's the fuel itself, okay? 
Uh, we have the ignition temperature, oxygen percentages, burn rate. All of these values are the ones that you normally change to generate more stuff. And then on this side over here, we have the combustion settings. And I went and looked at all of the things, emit suit, <laughs> the expansion skill. Like there's a lot of things that play an, an important role on this uh, things right here. So yeah, I, I recommend going into the info tab, reading what each does, playing around with the parameters, because as you saw with the smoke tutorial, it's a lot of trial and error. You need to see, you need to try it. You need to like have a scene or have a specific goal in mind and try to get to what uh, you're, you're trying to solve. This is the solver settings. And there we go, simulate air. We are assigning the material, which in this case is the flame torch material. It's just a basic uh, volume material with the temperature and things turned on. And we're outputting, as you can see, this ob this object right here, the sphere that we're creating, is the same object object that's getting outputted as the as the object that's on fire. Okay, so that's why we see the sphere on fire. Now, what is it that we're gonna do? We're of course gonna grab our uh, logs, our cylinders. We're gonna get them in here as a, as an array because it's, it's three objects that we want to emit from. Hopefully this doesn't break my computer. And uh, we're gonna grab this mesh and we're gonna plug this in in the geometry tab. So now this thing is the geometry that we're bearing the source and where we're emitting the source air from. And we also need to make sure to tell this thing that this is the geometry that we're burning. So we're gonna plug this all the way over here. Perfect. So now we delete this guys right here. And yes, the output geometry is like, what the hell is going on here? You can't do that. And the reason why we can do that is, as you can see, uh, the burning geo right here is um, is set to a single geometry. And, and it's expecting not an array, but a geometry. So to make it simple, I mean, we really don't have a, a problem here. We can just grab all of the cylinders, combine them, freeze the transformations, center P with everything. No! See, that's why it's important to, uh, <laughs> what's the word? That's why it's important to, to save. So let's go back real quick. And yeah, that's that's one of the things that I don't like about simulation. Uh, you really need to have like, I, I consider my computer to be quite like beefy. Like I do have enough like RAM and processor and stuff. But yeah, simulation is one of those things that you really need like a power machine. Like I, I've known uh, guys that do simulation and they have those computers that can uh, have like four slots for, um, for like, um, what's the word? Uh, for processors, so you can have four processors in your computer. That's it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. So let's go, let's set our project, and let's set the next to live real quick. There we go. Now we open our brace here. That's why we saved. There we go. So um, that's the flame torch, normal. Okay. So I'm gonna grab all of the logs right here. First, I'm gonna freeze transformation, delete history, and now I'm gonna combine them. There we go. So the combined object, which is the lit history, there we go. Simple object, the geometry is already there. So I'm gonna go Windows, um, Bifrost Graph, right here. And, uh, oh, it seems like we lost the flame torch. Okay, no problem. Let's delete that whole thing. Bifrost Browser, we go again to Fire, and we bring the flame torch again. So Import, cool. So same thing that we had before. I'm just gonna grab my cylinder here, which are the locks, bring them in. This is a single mesh, so we can plug this in into the out geometry. And this is also gonna be the out geometry all the way over here, perfect. Now these two nodes, to which were the ones that created the sphere and added the shader, we don't need it anymore. And uh, technically, uh, that should be it. I'm gonna save. And yeah, you can see on frame one, we already have the little like fuel and combustion thing ready to go. So the moment I hit play, you're gonna see how this thing becomes like fire. So boom. Uh, what's the main problem there? Uh, I of course need to change this to play every frame. So you might see my voice or things uh, crash a little bit. Let me show you real quick. And playback speed, play every frame free. One thing that we can do to, to make this thing a little bit like easier and more uh, workable is create a cache. So before the material, remember this is before the material, we're gonna do a file cache. So all of these objects are gonna be cached here. Uh, why are you doing this? Uh, it's, it's expecting to find something. They changed something here. Yeah, we need to go to write mode. Write mode. Let's change this thing first. So we're going to go into our projects. We're going to go next to live. Cache. Buy first. I'm going to call this brazier dot hashtag or number, 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 number dot Bob, so that we get the cache for the whole animation. That's a very common error. We save. And um, 
yeah so again same thing it, it, it's kind of like expecting an array when there's no array there mm, that's kind of weird i think we can just like delete this thing let me just see if there's like a special property here no okay so we're just going to delete this create a new output node and then plug this out geometry here into the output and then i'm going to grab uh the geometry here the the one that we're bearing the, the property from, actually this one right here. And we're gonna plug it in. And you can see that right now it's called a mesh, but we can change it to, because we want to output the same mesh, like the same shape, right? It's, it's just that. I mean, if you don't want to output the shape, you could also like just get rid of it and, and that's also fine. Let's save again. And uh, now if I start playing, uh, this is gonna, should be caching. So I'm gonna pause this real quick. I'm gonna let this cache for, I don't know, like 80 frames and see how it looks and then I'll come back, okay? Give me just one second. Okay, I actually stopped the cache at frame 17. I'm gonna go back to the graph and I'm gonna change the file cache from write to read mode. And now I should be able to scrub through the uh, first frames right here. And you can see it looks really, really cool. It's like, boom, the, the fast explosion. And then we get this. However, one of the things that I don't like is, as you can see here, uh, it, it, it's totally ignoring the, the metal. Now, it might look cool, but we're gonna have this sort of things, and, and that's not something that you would expect to see. Like, I can imagine, and I can see the smoke going around the elements, but you're not gonna see the smoke and the fire going through the elements, right? Like, that's not something that happens. So, before we continue with the, with the final cache, I wanna go here and I wanna change the uh, collision properties. So, that's why we have this low poly brace here, right here. We bring it in here, and on the simulate aerial, we're gonna create a collision or collider node. We're gonna plug this collider right here. And we're gonna bring the collider into the colliders options. So as you can see, it is colliding with the uh, with the geo as well. Oh no, that's that was an overlap. So yeah, so that, that should make sure that the, that the thing works properly. I need to go back again to the file cache node and change this again to write mode because we're gonna be writing again. I'm gonna pause real quick and I'll be right back. Cool, so it worked. However, it didn't work exactly like how I wanted to work. And you're gonna see why. I, I get the same thing, I just did 15 frames of, uh, of uh, write right now. So I'm gonna go back to read mode so that we can read those frames. And if we can take a look, the combustion looks pretty, pretty cool, but it gets like, like we see this little floating things, which is okay because there's fuel over there. Like there's a little bit of fuel coming from the, from the locks and being projected all the way through here. So, so that fuel is getting ignited, but it's dying really, really quickly. As you can see there, it's just like not enough like uh, volume or fuel to, to create the suit or anything. Um, but yeah, that's not what I want because it, it's, it's leaving a lot of space between the locks. So why is that happening? That's due to in the simulate area, or sorry, in the simulate area settings or the area solver settings, we have this thing called, doo -doo 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 -doo, or where is it? There's an object called the, the resolution, the voxel resolution. I'm not seeing it. Where is it? Source air. There we go. So here on that geo detail size, right now it's set to 0 0.007, um, which is quite low. But if we want to be even more exact, we're gonna have to bring that lower. And of course, that's gonna increase the render time. I'm gonna give it a shot. Hopefully this doesn't crash. Let's say 0 0.003. Let's see if we can get like, like really, really close to the, to the element. Uh, I'm also gonna go into the collider. And um, here on the detail size, I'm also gonna lower this to like 0 0.02 and see if that helps with the, with the general um, option uh resolution mode i'm gonna change the geo mode from solid to shell so that it kind of like goes through all of the faces maybe that will work as well let's save real quick just in case anything bad happens and we're gonna uh, change this file cache to again a write mode so we're writing the new cache let's go back let me pause and i'll be right back very well guys so this one turned out amazing it looks great look at this huge 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 fireball you can see that since we increased the resolution like the voxel size is a lot smaller so we're gonna get a lot of details out of the, out of our uh brazier here and yeah i mean looks it looks really cool if you ask me and now i only did 14 frames the first few frames when the combustion was starting it took about like 30 seconds to do the the calculation by the frame 10, when, when there was a lot of smoke and fire, it was taking about two or three minutes. So if I wanted to do like a five second animation, which would be 120 frames, it will probably take like a two hours to simulate. Now, remember, we're doing this and we're caching at the same time. So once we, like once those two hours pass, 
we're done. Like our fire is ready and we can just render it out and, and it's not going to take us long because we already saved the cache. The problem is, and here's where simulation work is, is, is so complicated, I think, or in my opinion, it's very, um, very uh, expensive in regards to time. Imagine that we do, like, we set the render, we let it render, meanwhile, we are lucky to have, like, another computer and we're working on something else, and, and then we come back and we don't like something. You're going to have to do it again. You're going to change parameters, you're going to change settings, and you're going to have to do it again. Uh, from what I remember talking with my, 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 with my uh, simulation friends, not simulated friends, simulation friends, friends who do simulations, they mentioned that sometimes they work with really low resolutions to just like get their general shape of the effect. And they know that if they can like micro control and make sure that things look good at a, like a roughly like big scale, very similar to how we like sculptors do like the blockings and stuff. They know that once they up everything, the resolution is going to be fine. But they did mention that, yeah, it happens that you work, you think it's going to work, you up the samples, you let the render go. And then when it comes back, you're like, oh, damn, I missed this. The vorticity is not good. Or maybe the client or the, or the project demands other kinds of directions. So, yeah, you're going to change it. So uh, this is the one I'm going to keep just because it's going to be really, really um, uh, expensive for me to do the whole render right now. Uh, but I promise that I will show you the full render. I'm going to do a five second animation, 120 frames, and uh, and we're going to do that, uh, but not for, for this video. So you're just going to see like the image. We're going to do the render right now. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll have the video later because I have to render this overnight and stuff. So so yeah, just, just keep in mind that simulation is expensive, okay? Now, uh, the cool thing is this already has a nice material. I really like this like shot right here. So let's just add our uh, very traditional uh, plane right here. Now, what, one thing you can do is you can actually hide this, the the uh, Biforce graph for now. It's there. We haven't lost it. It's, it's still there. Don't worry. But now we can work with all of this a little bit faster because we don't need it just yet. Let's bring this thing up, 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 and up. There we go. Smooth this out. We go to Arnold, lights. Uh, let's do a Skydome light. And let's do our... Uh, the one that we always use, the I think it's core chart something, the urban core chart. There we go, which is like a like a overcast day, which is great. And I'm actually gonna go into the light and I'm gonna reduce the exposure like quite a bit so that we can really see the fire like glowing. I think this is gonna be really cool. Let's go H here to to show it again. There we go. And I'm gonna go rendering cameras panels look to selected. Let's bring our resolution gate. Let's find like a nice little effect right here. Cool. Now we definitely need to add a, a material to this guy right here. So I'm gonna duplicate it because I, I don't wanna have this one. I'm gonna hide the one, the low poly one. I'm gonna grab this one right here. We could bevel it, we could do whatever we want. But right now I'm gonna keep it like this. Just gonna assign a new material. And we're gonna do an Arnold AI standard surface. And let's just do like a dark metallic rough material. So we see a little bit of reflections and stuff. I know that the model is not great, uh, but it should do the job. So yeah, let's keep it like that. And let's save before anything happens again. Let's open the Arnold Render View. Uh, one thing that I uh, did, uh, I did a little bit of research as well when I was doing the smoke. Unfortunately, you can use GPU for, for aerial fluids, but you're going to have to like do other kind of things and, and plug in certain like links and stuff. So you, you, you have to cache the area as a, as a volume and then that volume has to be read in a different way. So it's a mess. Um, I recommend doing CPU for, for this kind of simulations. I, I think for Bifrost for cloth, since it's a little bit more like geometry, it's not like volumey, uh, it should be a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, let's give it a shot. We're going to grab our camera shape one and we're going to say render or just uh, render. Let's see what we get. Hopefully this doesn't crash. We're supposed to be reading a cache file, so um, this should be relatively simple. But you never know with 3D. So let me pause real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so the fire is working. As you can see, it's giving us a very, very nice result. Like, Look at the flames, look at the smoke. Everything looks pretty cool. Uh, but I would like more emissions. So let me see if we can change that emission. Let's go here to the flame torch. And we should have here the torch material. There we go. So I would like this emission. Yeah, so black body. Okay, I mean, right now we're going from the temperature of the emission. So the more temperature we have, we can try and increase this to like two. No, we can't. Hmm. 
That's quite weird. Maybe it's the size of the of the element. It could be the size of the of the element that's given. I mean, we are seeing the the light right there. You can see it there on the ground. But I was expecting a little bit more light. But again, maybe the, since this the scale of this object is like small, we're not getting as much effect. Now we could go though to the Bifrost graph, and if we go to the temperature of the object, so on the aerial source air, there's the temperature. Where right now it's set to twenty. No, that's the air properties. I don't want the air properties. Should be the combustion properties. Where is it? Yeah, no, I think I'll owe you guys that one because we definitely need to increase the the, the temperature of the object to give more more effect. We could just add like a light there. In this case, to make this thing look a little bit better, I'm just gonna like let's bring this to like minus two another go or just like basic oh, uh, basic zero there we go so yeah um, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit more research on, on how to increase the temperature of the fire I think it has to do with the scale uh, the scale of the object but yeah as you can see this works pretty nice so I can definitely see this sort of thing on a, on a shot like for a commercial for a movie for a cinematic or something and yes it's gonna be expensive yes it's gonna take time oh. Sorry, I'm gonna repeat that because I think when I'm rendering, the audio gets cut out. So, uh, as I'm saying, the render is there, and uh, I, I'm gonna check out on how to increase the the luminosity of the flame so that we get more light onto the scene. But this is something that I could definitely see in a commercial, in a in a, a movie, in a cinematic, and it works very very nice. Now imagine this brazier uh, with um with like proper rust and all of the rivets that we're still missing and stuff. I think you can see how this is so, so powerful. And it only took us, what, 30 minutes to set this up. And yes, the render and simulation time will take quite a bit of time. But as, as I've mentioned, it's it's just part of the, of the process. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this uh, Bifrost series so far. I think we're pretty much done with like the basic thing, which is smoke, cloth, and uh, fire. We're just missing water. So I'll probably do like a water exercise in the next coming uh, days. We're now in February, or tomorrow we start with February. Remember, we're still giving away a thousand... Uh, free courses for those who join our newsletter so it's going to be down here in the description make sure to check it out it was from yesterday's video this is only only going to be active until february 3rd okay and um yeah let us know in the comments new month new stuff new content let us know what kind of things you want to learn tomorrow we'll have 100 with more blender stuff and i'll see you back on uh wednesday when we continue with more uh maya stuff so yeah that's it guys make sure to like share subscribe you know the drill i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye